Um, but no, I mean, again, you see, a language is a very gutsy thing. You know, when you learn a language, you're not just learning a, a set of tokens that you can translate the tokens of your language into. You're, you're learning a whole way of being. You're learning a whole way of thinking, feeling, and, and, and so on, you know. And, uh, and you feel it, you know. I can feel different when I speak. German words, when I speak French words, when I speak Italian words, they just are completely different. And poetry is like that, that when we read a poem or we listen to a piece of music, it has profound physiological effects. And I notice this with Wordsworth, that when you read Wordsworth, I couldn't get the point of Wordsworth for a long time, because I thought the ideas were rather boring, but I hadn't understood the importance of actually reading passages of, for example, his long autobiographical poem, The Prelude, out loud. And when you do, you get this sense of a being that is moving, and it is moving your being. It, it, you can feel it in your musculature, you can feel it in your physical frame. Uh, I don't know how you can feel it in your bones almost, but it feels like that. It changes your breathing, it changes, you know, and I believe when you do listen to music or, or read poetry, we can detect changes in tension in muscle groups depending on, on the rhythm of what you're reading. So it affects your skeletal muscle, it affects um, the skin and makes the hair stand on end, it can bring tears to your eyes, it, it can quicken your pulse, it can raise your blood pressure. In other words, it has enormous effects on you physiologically that have deep, deep meaning. And that's why things can't just be paraphrased or, you know, and I always say a computer will never write or understand a poem until it has blood, blood coursing through its chips, you know. <laughs>